From an optimistic doubter to someone who says his faith is central to everything he does, Muhammad Ali is sometimes called the Muslim Banksy. Back in the 80s, he was a pioneer of street art, fusing graffiti styles with Islamic design and calligraphy. Trevor Barnes went to meet him. Graffiti, classically defined as inscriptions scribbled, scratched or sprayed on walls, has a long history, from the caves of Lascaux 17,000 years ago to this studio wall here in Birmingham. Muhammad Ali is the artist in question, completing a canvas armed with spray cans, rollers and paint brushes. Now, Muhammad, you're a Muslim, your faith informs all you do, so does that make this work and all the work you do religious art? Religious art? I have, have a bit of a problem with that because I think it has all kinds of connotations in terms of preaching or proselytizing, whereas my art doesn't do that, I don't think. I, I, I hope my art is about asking questions for us to ponder upon values that are relevant to modern society and often religion is perhaps put into a certain bracket where it's not seen as relevant. So what are your themes then? I started off exploring universal values, justice, freedom, peace, knowledge, seeking of knowledge, or, or, or you know, perseverance, a spiritual reliance on, on a divine creator. Why street art and why graffiti? Human beings want to tell their stories and they also want to tell them in public spaces. They want others to see there's something quite liberating about having your story out in a public space. It's reclaiming space and questions about ownership of space and people who perhaps who are powerless through this act of graffiti, achieving that status of power actually and saying, I exist and this is my voice, this is my story. Well, we're going outside in a moment to see some of your work in its element, outdoors, in situ. Um, but it's worthwhile remembering, you know, having been commissioned from Dubai to Malaysia, Australia to Lancashire, you've also been commissioned by the Vatican, uh, where you did a kind of live performance to sound. What was going on there? Yeah, I was uh, invited to speak as well as actually perform at the same time uh, on stage in front of, you know, a thousand odd Catholics and, and other faith as well. There was an interfaith gathering. And I was able to paint live on stage, sequenced with a soundscape that I'd created of kind of Gregorian chants fused with Islamic call for prayer, as well as vocals from a, a jazz vocalist friend of mine. The fact that you were using the call to prayer and Gregorian chant, did it give you consciously this feeling of, of an act of worship? That sacred art? rather than religious art. Well, I mean, my hair stands on end even thinking about it. There were people in the audience that were in tears. So clearly something special was happening in that room, you know, where bringing of these different expressions together, uh, I think it le led to this kind of electric feeling of, you know, wow, this, this is something we need to explore more. Well, we've come to one of your uh, outdoor pieces here uh, in the inner city area of Sparkbrook in Birmingham, a mixture of Islamic decorative stuff on the left and I think a bit of a Celtic knot to the right. Uh, who controls the past, controls the future? W what's the point of this piece? This is the street I was born and raised on, so it, it's kind of close to my heart as well. And really, it's about kind of the narrative of the area, in, in fact, of me growing up in the 80s here. It was kind of ethnically diverse, uh, there was a strong Irish community, we were kind of in and out of each other's homes, which we don't see so much today, unfortunately. Do you think the danger is that as this kind of art becomes more mainstream, it loses some of its subversive edge, if you like? I think if this was a piece of art that was commissioned in terms of its theme and its content, then I say there is that danger. But when walls are offered, and as the artist you're freely able to say what you want to say, even if it's as contentious as this very statement here, which can be interpreted in many different ways, I think there is no danger there because it really is kind of like reflects reality and the people rather than be a dictated message by a commissioner. Do you think you're working in a tradition of Islamic art? I mean, the aerosol, the paint can, could be the modern-day equivalent of calligraphy and script? Well, absolutely. Calligraphic script, Islamic script and geometric patterns here for them to be painted with the spray can is adapting and using modern tools and updating the traditional calligrapher's pen and ink. I think it speaks volumes, it says a lot about actually reclaiming 
your voice and actually projecting your faith and uh, and your an expression of faith in a confident and bold way that I don't think can be achieved in any other way. Muhammad Ali was talking to Trevor Barnes.